Good evening. It is about 17.58 p.m. on Good Friday, the 29th of March, 2024. I'm going to record now the Good Friday celebration of the Lord's Passion. And it is the second part of the Tridom, which began yesterday. Thursday. I'm going to share all of the liturgy except the reproaches because I do not have a copy of them. We did use them in church but they were part of something that was produced and I don't have access to that. They're very very beautiful and if I can I'm going to see if somebody can allow me to find a copy um, and I would record them separately because they are only heard once a year they're very moving and they're part of the liturgy where we honour the cross of Christ and the choir sung them well we joined in actually after we venerated the cross of Christ so before the readings I'm going to just say one or two prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Michael Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan, and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love entrusts me here, ever this evening be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And we pray for the faithful departed. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Before reading the sacred scripture, open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the gift of the same Spirit we may be always truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Prayer to our Lord Jesus. I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to go your way. I give you my eyes to see as you do. I give you my tongue to speak your words. I give you my mind that you may think in me. I give you my spirit that you may pray in me. Above all, I give you my heart that you may love in me, your Father and all mankind. I give you my whole self that you may grow in me, so that it is you, Lord Jesus, who live and work and pray in me. A prayer to God the Father. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in mine eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. 
God be at mine end and at my departing. A prayer for peace, particularly in Palestine, Gaza. O God, source of holy desires, right counsels and just actions, grant to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, so that our hearts may be wholly devoted to your service, and all our days, freed from dread of our enemies, may be passed in quietness under your protection. An act of charity. O oh my God, I love you with my whole heart, and above all things, because you are infinitely good and perfect, and I love my neighbour as myself. For love of you, grant that I may love you more and more in this life and in the next for all eternity. Good Friday, celebration of the Lord's Passion. The Tridom, this is the second part. Good Friday. And there, there were several priests and deacons and they came in because it was a silent. We were just hadn't closed, we didn't close the celebration yesterday evening, uh, the Last Supper. And we prayed silently for a while. Then the priest says prayers. Lord, by shedding his blood for us, your son, Jesus Christ, established the Paschal mystery. In your goodness, make us holy and watch over us always. Lord, by the suffering of Christ your Son, you have saved us from that death we inherited from sinful Adam. By the likeness, by the law of nature, we have borne the likeness of his manhood. May the sanctifying power of grace help us to put on the likeness of our Lord in heaven, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. The first part, the liturgy of the word. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 13 to 53 and 12. The theme, he was pierced through for our faults. See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him and kings stand speechless before him. For they shall see something never told and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard and to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling, he grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground without beauty, without majesty, we saw him. No looks to attract our eyes, a thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised and we took no account of him. And yet, ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God 
and brought low. Yet he was pierced through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse. Like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken. Would anyone plead his call, cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our faults struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, though he had done no wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs. He shall have a long life. And through him, what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Hence, I will grant the whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner. While he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 30. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. That is your response and mine. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord, in the face of all my foes. I am a reproach, an object of scorn to my neighbours and of fear to my friends. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Those who see me in the street run far from me. I am like a dead man forgotten in men's hearts, like a thing thrown away. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But as for me, I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Be strong. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The second reading is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4, 14 to 16, 
five, seven to nine. And the theme, he learnt to obey through suffering and became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. Since Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven. We must never let go of the faith that we have professed, for it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us, but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident, then, in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered us prayer and entreaty aloud and in silent tears to the one who had the power to save him out of death and he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learnt to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal life, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then we all would stand to greet the gospel. And if the, the, the acclamation is not sung, it may be omitted. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Christ was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross by. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all names. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 18, 1 to 19 and verse 42. The Lord be with you and with your spirit and with you. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. There was a garden there and he went into it with his disciples. Judas the traitor knew the place well since Jesus had often met his disciples there and he brought the cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with the lanterns and torches and all weapons. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus replied, I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you're looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. 
Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had struggled to the Jews. It's better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace, but Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one who known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who was keeping the door and brought Peter in. The maid on duty as the door at the maid on the duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold, and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret, but why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, if there's something wrong in what I said, point it out. But it, if, if there is no offence in it, why do you strike me? Then Anas sent him, still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at once a cock crew. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the Praetorium themselves or they would be defiled and sat at another table. They then led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves or they would be defiled and, and, and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came outside to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, 
if he were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, we are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfill the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him. Are you the king of the Jews? he asked. Jesus replied, Do you ask and this of your own accord, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent my being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. Pilate said, So you are a king then? Jesus answered, It is you who say it is. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth and all who are on the side of truth. Listen to my voice. Pilate said, Truth? What is that? And with that he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no case against him. But according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this, they shouted, Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a brigand. Barabbas was a brigand and Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Jews, hail king of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I am going to bring him out to you, to let you see. I find no case. Jesus then came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Hence, here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and guards shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I can find no case against him. The Jews replied, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. Jesus replied, You would have no power over me if I had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt.
from that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment as a place called the pavement in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover. Preparation day, about the sixth hour, Pilate that said to the Jews, take him away, we're going cru crucify him. Pilate said, do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priest answered, we have no king except Caesar. So, in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus and carrying his own cross. He went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed on the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city and the routing was in Hebrew. The writing was in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. So the Jewish chief priests said to Pilate, you should not write king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from the neck to hem, in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, instead of throwing, tearing it, let us throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of scripture were fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my clothes. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Near the cross, of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister Mary the wife of Clophas and Mary of Magdala seeing his mother and the disciples he loved standing near her Jesus said to his mother woman this is your son then to the disciple, he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her up in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed and to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. 
a jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in the vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up the spirit. It was preparation day and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found his mother was already dead. They came, no, when they came to Jesus, they found he was already dead. And so instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth, and he gives it so that you may believe as well. Because all of this happened to fulfill the words of Scripture, not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because he was afraid of the Jews, he asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came. They came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time, and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with spices in linen cloths, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in this garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was a Jewish day of preparation and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So now we do the general intercessions for the church. Let us pray, dear friends, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world. That God the Almighty Father guide us, guide it and gather in and gather it together so that we may worship him in silence and the orgy. Silent prayer then. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown us your glory to all nations in Caesar. Yeah. 
Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Christ, your Son. Guide the work of your church. Help it to persevere in faith. Proclaim your name and bring your salvation to people everywhere. Amen. We pray for Pope Francis. Let us pray for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God, who chose him to be bishop, may give him health and strength and guide, govern and govern God's holy people. Then you have silent prayer again. Almighty and eternal God, you guide all things by your word. You govern all Christian peoples. In your love, protect the Pope you have chosen for us under his leadership guidance. Deepen our faith and make us better Christians. Amen. We pray for the ch clergy and the laity of the church. Let us pray for our bishop, for all his bishops, priests and deacons. Pray for all and all who have a special ministry in the church and for all God's people. So now silent prayer. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Listen to our prayers and help each of us in his own vocation to do your work more faithfully. Silent prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Five. We pray for those preparing for baptism. Let us pray for those among us preparing for baptism that God in his mercy make them responsive to his love. Forgive their sins through the waters of new birth and give them life in Jesus Christ the Lord. Silent prayer. Then, almighty and eternal God, you continually bless your church with new members. Increase the faith and understanding of those among us preparing for baptism. Give them a new birth in these living waters and make them members of your chosen family for unity of Christians. Pray, let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep us together in one church, all those who seek the truth with sincerity. Amen. Silent prayer. And then, almighty and eternal God, you keep together those you have united. Look how many... Look kindly on all who follow Jesus, your Son. We are still consecrate, consecrated to you by our common baptism. Make us one in the fullness of faith and keep us one in the fellowship of love. Amen. We pray for the Jewish people those who practice their religion as opposed to Zionists who prefer war. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God, that they may continue to grow in the love of his name 
and in faithfulness of his covenants. We have silent prayer then. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and his posterity. Listen to your church as we pray that the people you first made your own may arrive at the fullness of redemption. Amen. Silent prayer. I'm not making it too long because I feel a tiredness coming over me that I would actually sleep while praying these prayers. It wouldn't be the first time, but that's usually when I'm alone. <laughs> I know I'm alone, but I'm not alone, if you know what I mean. So I'll continue with them, but I'll, I won't have such... I, I could literally fall asleep in those silent moments. I've been working out everything that I've read, I've typed up. So that's what's taken up my time this week. We pray for those who do not believe in Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Jesus Christ, but the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way to salvation. Silent prayer. Almighty and eternal God, enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to find the truth. As they walk before you in sincerity of heart, help us to grow in love for one another, to grasp more fully the mystery of your Godhead and to become more perfect witnesses of your love in the sight of men. Amen. We'll have silent prayer again, but not too much. We pray for those who do not believe in God. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find him by sincerely following all that is right. We'll have silent prayer again then. Almighty and eternal God, you created mankind so that all might long to find you and have peace when you are found. Grant that in spite of the hurtful things that stand in the way, they may all recognise in the lives of Christians the tokens of your love and mercy and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God and Father of us all. We'll have silent prayer. We pray for all in public office, particularly in the UK, our government and the opposition. We don't have much hope or faith in either side and there's probably those that are just independent they might be better than what's a, a one world order look of government let us pray for those who served in the public office that God may guide their minds and hearts so that all men may live in true peace and freedom and not follow America wanting more war and more war. So now we have a silent prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you know the longing of men's hearts and you protect their rights in your goodness Watch over those in authority so that people everywhere may enjoy religious freedom, security and peace. Amen. We have some silent prayer again. We pray for those in special need. 
Let us pray, dear friends, that God, the Almighty Father, may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travellers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, especially Julian Assange, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger and disease in Gaza, Palestine. Right now, they are starving. They're homeless. They are without absolutely everything they need. And they're still being bombed. We pray for their protection and compassion to hit them. Silent prayer. Almighty ever-living God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need, especially those who want to get relatives out of Gaza into relative safety in, in um, Egypt. One of my adopted daughters is in Egypt, currently registering her mother and her sister to try and get them out as quick as possible because they're suffering so much. It's not an easy place for young, let alone old. So the second part is short because I do not have the reproaches. I have very little to go on. Um, we had a specially typed up document and it's at the church, it's theirs. And I don't have any books with it in. So I'll just mention about the veneration and then this will be the end until uh, tomorrow. But I will, I do have, I'll have another um, video to upload on the um, Last Supper. But that will come later. This will take a while to upload. It's not particularly long. It's only 50 something minutes. So we had a big cross. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the saviour of the world. And we replied... Come, let us worship. And the priest did that three times. And after each response, the people that could knelt down. And then the priest placed it in a suitable place. And we all venerated the cross. And people approached it and made a simple genuflection and appropriate sign of reverence. And the, everybody went up. And the third part was the blessed sacrament was brought from the altar of repose and the priest gave the communion rite and afterwards uh, the prayer after communion. Almighty and eternal God, you have restored us to life by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Let him continue this healing work within us. May we who participate in this mystery never cease to serve you. And then the priest blessed the people and he said, Lord, send down your abundant blessings upon your people who have devoutly recalled the death of your son in sure hope of the resurrection. Grant them pardon, bring them comfort, may their faith grow stronger and their eternal salvation be assured. We ask this through Christ our Lord, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we departed in silence, and then that uh, we left. And we go back tomorrow evening for the Vigil Mass, and uh, I'll be reading the third reading at that. Um, actually, I think that I could... I could do now instead of making another a, a separate video I can do that what should have come before this this is all upside down but I am very tired and I feel that I would be falling asleep but I still think I would like you to hear the words of the Holy Thursday which is the beginning of the Easter Tridium it was the evening mass of the Lord's Supper 
We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our salvation, our life and our resurrection. Through him we are saved and made free. God our Father, we are gathered here to share with the supper which your only Son left to his church to reveal his love. He gave it to us when he was about to die and commanded us to celebrate it as the new and eternal sacrifice. We pray that in this Eucharist we may find the fullness of love and life. The first reading is from the book of Exodus and instructions concerning the Passover meal. The reading is from Exodus 12, 1 to 8, 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month is to be the first of all the others for you. The first month of your year, speak to the whole community of Israel and say, On the tenth day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbour, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for the animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one year old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night the flesh is to be eaten roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night, I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike, and I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 115 and the response. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. This is for you and me. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. O oh, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. 
the blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <coughs> the um, theme, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the death of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26. This is what I received from the Lord and in turn passed on to you that on the same night that he was betrayed the Lord Jesus took some bread and thanked God for it and broke it and he said this is my body which is for you do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you, says the Lord. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord, the Lord be with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The theme, now he showed how perfect his love was. It was before the festival of the Passover and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in of the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come in from God and was returning to God. And he got up from the table, removed his outer garment and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, Not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, No one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are he knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, Though not all of you are. 
when he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the washing of feet should follow and the homily, if they choose, and songs should be sung. Antiphon 1. The Lord Jesus, when he had eaten with his disciples, poured water into a basin, and he began to wash their feet, saying, This example I leave to you. Antiphon 2. Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus said to him, If I do not wash your feet, you can have no part with me. So he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Now you do not know what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Lord, do you wash my feet? Antiphon 3 If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, then surely you must wash one another's feet. Antiphon 4 If there is this love among you, all will know that you are my disciples. Jesus said to his disciples, If there is this love among you, all will know that you are my disciples. Antiphon 5, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you, says the Lord. Antiphon 6, faith, hope and love. Let these endure among you and the greatest of these is love. And then there was a prayer over the gifts. Lord, make us worthy to celebrate these mysteries. Each time we offer this memorial sacrifice, the work of our redemption is accomplished. And the preface, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, he is the true and eternal priest who established this unending sacrifice. He offered himself as a victim for our deliverance and taught us to make this offering in his memory as we eat his body which he gave for us we grow in strength as we drink his blood which he poured out for us we are washed clean now with the angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven we sing unending hymns of your praise Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The communion antiphon, this body will be given for you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you receive them, do so in remembrance of me. And after communion, almighty God, we receive new life from the supper your Son gave us into this world. May we find full contentment in the meal we hope to share in your eternal kingdom. 
and then of course it ends without an ending and the Holy Eucharist is transferred in a procession to a, a place of um, rest and people stayed behind and prayed and the Blessed Sacrament is now taken in procession to the altar of repose where it remained there until today and a suitable hymn was sung and uh, after a period of silent adoration and the priest returned to the sacristy but everyone nobody spoke that's how it was because he didn't end it it doesn't end until the vigil tomorrow so it was an incomplete process but that's how it is every Easter uh, so I might say just one or two very short final um, prayer after having read scripture come Holy Spirit guide us work in us with your gifts so that your presence may be shown and we may serve in different ways for the good of all spirit of the living god you alone search out everything even the depths of god's intentions remain with us always that we may know all that god has freely bestowed on us that we may rightly judge and value all things. I have some special prayers. They are done by a, a man who's now deceased, who helped form, he did form with a Catholic priest. Uh, Dennis Wrigley wrote lots of um, Holy Spirit-filled prayers, particularly for this season of Easter and Lent and Easter. And I have typed them all up which I'm going to do them all tomorrow, or I don't, don't think I'll do them today. And um, I might share one or two now. They're, they're near my feet, and um, they're very beautiful and um, appropriate. And uh, I'll just do one or two of them because it is Good Friday, and they're very beautifully written many years ago. I've known this man and, and the Maranatha community. It still exists in Manchester. I'm still a member. The Cross of Christ. Thoughts, prayers, meditations. The whole way. They would have put you on a throne. But you knelt down and washed their feet. They would have placed you in a chariot and you came to town on a donkey they would have placed you with the high and mighty but you chose to be with the little children and the humble poor the outcast and the thief we fail to hear your word of life you welcomed us but we denied you. You blessed us, but we betrayed you. You set us free, but we arrested you. You had compassion on us, but we spat in your face. You loved us, but we struck you. You forgave us, but we slapped you down. You accepted us, but we rejected you. You healed us, but we condemned you. You reached out to us, but we flogged you. You clothed us with righteousness. But we stripped you, you affirmed us, but we mocked you, we cried, crucify, you cried, forgive them, you gave us life, but we killed you, we went the whole way, you triumphed, amen. The words of Dennis Wrigley, rest in peace. 
the Maranatha community, 102 Earlham Road, Flixton, Manchester, M41 6JT. Telephone 0161 4858. You can find them. They have a website and they, you can have copies of the prayers. That, are, that is, I'll carry on with a, one or two more because they're so beautiful. This is called Thy Will Be Done. In stillness, in silence, in darkness, in expectation, he withdrew, knelt, prayed, sorrowfully, earnestly. His sweat fell to the ground. He knew the coming agony, the coming pain. His sole desire that the Father's will be done. Amen. Forsaken. Warm hearts grow cold and affirmations which are strong soon yield to doubt and then denial. The early zeal gives way so easily to drifting, compromise, a doubting withdrawal, a turning away, and the leaping fiery flames become the dying embers of disbelief and worse, denial. The lips that cried Hosanna at best are silent or at worst cry crucify and that which was important now matters little and can be discarded. Its worth devalued its truth denied, its message mocked, its meaning swept away. Our moods change, our promises soon broken. We allow ourselves to be held captive by the spirit of the age to be silenced by this world's voices, to believe the lies so sweetly spoken, and we become less simple, less childlike, less able to enter the kingdom where the constant unwavering one, changeless, reigns eternally. The one who stood alone before the crowd. Forsaken, yet triumphant. Amen. The next title. We choose Barabbas. He brought light to a dark world. He brought love to an unloving world. He brought peace to a warring world. He brought hope to a hopeless world. He brought bread to a hungry world. He brought healing to a hurting world. The blind saw, the deaf heard, the lame walked, the dead lived, yet Yet, they chose darkness. They chose poison, not food. They chose war, not peace. They chose desolation, not hope. They chose disease, not wholeness. They chose Barabbas, 
Today, we choose Barabbas. Amen. The title, The Hammer Strikes. You made the tree. Men made the cross. You made the metal. Men made the hammer, made the nails. You gave the gift of life to those who shouted for your death. You gave them the energy to drive the nails deep within your flesh. And as the hammer struck, remorselessly over and over again, so your love was spurned and vilified, your tenderness reviled, ruthlessly, vindictively, the hammer struck its blows. For ugliness in place of beauty, for war in place of peace, for hatred instead of love, for darkness instead of light. The rhythm of the striking blows was matched by shrieking voice and hurled abuse. And the hammer goes on striking. And all the centuries as humankind makes the choice of death in place of life. With every innocent one held in captivity, tortured and alone, the hammer strikes. With every child abused, neglected and afraid, the hammer strikes. With every act of inhumanity and hate, the hammer strikes. And at the end of all the striking, and you are nailed by cruel men onto a cruel cross, and you're raised up high for all to see. You cry, forgive them, Father. And confronting all the hosts of darkness you overcame and bearing pain beyond all pain you cried victoriously it is complete it is finished and the echoes of the hammer on the nails resound through all the history of mankind throughout our lives reminding us again and again and yet again that it is you who bear our sorrows, you who share our pain, you who take our guilt and shame. It is you, and only you, who has paid the highest price for others, for all, me. So, Lord, help me in putting down my hammer to cling to this, your cross, holding fast to nothing else, for you are all, you are my Saviour and my Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance and may you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. And I do plan to do the whole of these um devotions, meditations, all in one. Uh, I've only done part of them because they're appropriate for today. Most of them are appropriate for today, actually, but that's long enough for you to have to listen to because there, there were quite a lot missing. The reproaches are very special. Um, and the singing and the songs and the hymns are, are, that they have are very good, but... I didn't have them either. So um, better for you to go to church. Than, but not everyone can. So thank you so much. God bless and good night. And I hope to do some more recording. Not today, but tomorrow. It's Saturday tomorrow. Holy Saturday. God bless. Bye-bye.